<laughs> yeah. Look through my notes. I have three pages. I could not stop writing crap down. Or oh, these are. Did you write down all the trailers? The trailers, so I wouldn't forget. Um, okay. I'll go. I want to talk about this movie from beginning to end. So before we get into spoilers, I'll just say this right now. All in all, this movie's a mess. This. <laughs> I'm, like, it's hard to interrupt, but I love how the girl, you just wrote Coke Girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's before I knew she was a cop. The first thing you see you do, and I was going to mention what she does. But she well, she well, takes it and she's like, oh! Yeah, like, it's, we'll it's talk about that in a minute. She didn't really get far beyond. No, no, she didn't. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, okay, so this movie is co written by Skip Woods. If you don't know who Skip Woods is, Pause this video, go to Wikipedia, look him up. This guy is the worst writer in Hollywood right now. No offense to you, Skip Woods. I'm sure you're a nice guy, but you cannot write movies to save your life. He's gonna see this movie. Oh my gosh. So, this movie is entirely sabotaged by its writing. The directing is not that bad. The action scenes are really good. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And they're brutal. This is a hard R. And the acting, they try, they do the best they can with what they have. And the music is pretty decent too. There was some, there was some catchy electronic music at, at certain parts of it. This whole movie is ruined by the writing. The characters are awful. We'll get into more of that in a second. The characters are awful. The story is way too simplistic and yet way too complex at the same time. Don't know how that's possible. It's way too long. Way too long. This feels like a three-hour epic, and well, it's no, not. It's like, no, that's the thing, though. It's not it, like it's. I guess I'd say it's decently long, like actual time, but it feels. It does. I'm saying, yeah, it feels too long, and it's boring. Oh, the action scenes are pretty intense. Like, there's a great scene about halfway in the movie where they're breaching an apartment. That was really good. It was really intense. It had a really good, like, realistic feel to they, it. They did that all wrong. Like, like, oh, really? I guess I wouldn't know. But, um, I, okay, so it's not realistic. But it was really intense, and it was gory. It was, it was, it was really the, good. The action, but there's like, the, the way they did the action reminded me of, like, House Down. Like the, oh, you mean Olympus Has Fallen? Olympus Has Fallen. Sorry. Yeah, that's the more gory one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, I mean, it's not nearly as over the top as Olympus Has Fallen. No, no. But, um, nor is it nearly as fun. But um, the action is pretty good, but there's not nearly enough of it. This movie tries so hard to focus on its terribly it's like, written it's like, plot, and it at tries at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, and then like all this crap in between. Those the middle three is things. so painfully. The first hour of this movie is painfully boring, and the characters are so annoying. So oh, overall, without giving into spoilers, I'll say this right now. If you are a die-hard fan of Schwarzenegger like me. I am. I'm a completist of him and Stallone. There's not a whole lot of their movies that I will not sit through. Like, I just watched Over the Top with Stallone and had a blast. Every December, I watch Jingle All the Way with Schwarzenegger. So my point being is that when it comes to those guys, even if their movies suck, I often will still watch them because I just love watching those guys so much. So if you are a die-hard fan like me of Schwarzenegger... Because of his performance, this is actually a solid performance of his. I would say this is the best dramatic Arnold performance since Terminator 2. And that was a long time ago, about 20 years ago. If, if you want to see Arnold do a really good serious performance, and because the action scenes are really good, or at least for considering how crappy this movie was, I don't the action scenes really good. I don't think he did either. He was, he was very serious. Yeah. Um, if you want to see Arnold give a good performance and you want to see some pretty good action, gory action, it is worth seeing, but do not spend money. Do not see this in the theaters. Wait for it to come out on Netflix and just give it a watch sometime when you don't have anything going on. Again, only if only for the diehard fans. If you're not that big of a Schwarzenegger fan, skip this movie. Don't even give it a second thought. This movie is a mess. I give it a D plus. That is being so generous, by the way, because this movie kind of... This movie kept losing me. It kept getting me back a little bit because the action scenes were so good, 
Well, not so good, but the action scenes were were good enough. Better than everything else. That was exactly, that's what I'm saying. The action scenes compared were, to the compared to the rest of the movie, the action scenes were good. exactly that's it. Like the action scenes, honestly, aren't like phenomenal. Like it's not like the Raid or or Dread or I mean, they're pretty, and Expendables they're, too. They're pretty, but they're pretty generic. They really are, but like they're well filmed, they're over the top, and they're mm -hmm. somewhat memorable. So because of that, when you compare that to the rest of this totally forgettable and piece of crap, it it shines. <laughs> it stands on the top, it sticks out. <laughs> so the action scenes are decent, but they're not like amazing. But I would say, unless you're the diehard fan, do not see this movie. Um, so let's just D plus for the action scenes and for Arnold's performance. That's it. That is the nicest thing I'll say about this movie. So let's get started. So, um, so Arnold is leading this DEA task force. Um, imagine the expendables. If you took out all likability and anything that's cool or unique about them, and fun about them, and cool about them, or anything nice about them, I could say, anything positive whatsoever, take all of that out, and that's this force with a piece of poop on top of it. This movie, is, I was telling him all the way here, it's like The Expendables if it was written by a 10-year-old who just started swearing at his school. Because there, this movie... Tons of profanity, oh, which God. is not necessarily a. I don't necessarily care, but it's not done well. It feels like it's written again. It feels like it's written by middle schoolers. You know how like you know how like young kids that like think it's really cool to swear, so they'll swear so much to the point where it's just silly. That's what this is. It's not like realistic profanity. It's not gritty profanity. It's just, it's just using immature. The, it's just using yeah. the swear word because it's a swear word. Exactly. It's immature profanity. Mm -hmm. And it's it's silly. I, got, I gotta say, though, like, like to say, though, Arnold swearing is hilarious. Arnold was, again, Arnold <laughs> carries this movie. He picks this well, piece of... Well, carries, I mean, you can't really to carry, the, to carry the finish some, line. You can't really carry something that doesn't, like... Move. <laughs> but, I mean, like, he... He does like he is kind of awesome in this movie. Like I said, this was a really good performance, and there were a few good lines. I wrote a couple of down because they were pretty fun. There was a great okay. Well, real quick before I say the lines, I'll add context to it. So he's he's leading this really obnoxious task force full of the most unlikable characters ever. They do a bust, and I don't want to get too much into the plot because I just feel sick about it talking about it, but. Basically, they get like ten million dollars from the drug from a Mexican drug cartel, and they secretly plan to steal it and keep it for themselves. But after the operation, someone else outside of this task force took it, so they don't know what happened to the money, and so now they're shamed upon by the DEA because the but, DEA. I mean, that part lost me. Like. Immediately, because like they okay, so they took the money. Like I don't want to say too much, but they, I mean they we're took going into spoilers. So okay, it does not matter. They, they took the money, and then the rest of the money they like blew it up, so it was gone. How yeah. did they know that there was ten million missing if all this money was blown up? Because this movie is written by Skip Skip Woods. I, <laughs> That's the best I can tell. Like, you. did someone go in after and collect all the blown up money and like? count it and say, oh, there's $10 million missing. Like, how did that, like, even... Well, it clearly didn't work because they were questioned by the DEA. Like, and so the DEA is, like, accusing them of being the ones who stole the money. And so they're like, you know, you stole this and now the drug cartel is going to be after you personally. And there's a great scene where we see them lecturing Arnold about this. They're accusing Arnold of being a criminal. They're, well, they're, they're interrogating him. Yes, they're interrogating him. And this guy is, like, this fat, chubby guy, and then Arnold just loses all patience, and he's like, he's like, who do you think you are? Let you me with your 48% body fat. 68. 68. Oh, I thought you said 68%. Oh, it's 48. Yeah, it's like, 
fat you fat and you you skinny man yeah you skinny man there's like a skinny guy next like a pencil neck lawyer next to him, like and you skinny man, screw you guys and just like storms out it was so awesome oh my God. and like and that's something i want to see say too like you were saying how arnold like doesn't smile these characters when i said that these characters are the most obnoxious characters ever i mean that God. there is nothing about these characters that are fun likable and they're trying hard Throughout the whole movie, these guys are cracking jokes left and right. There is the first like half of the movie is very comedic, and then the second half gets way more serious. The first half constantly throwing jokes at you. Mostly it's like banter between the guys I, in the in the I task force. Even, I didn't, I didn't even None of it's funny. funny. None of it is funny. They're talking about how like because because we're mature. That's why it's not funny. It's yeah, it's very juvenile thing, but there's a part where like they're at their shack playing video games, because that's what mercenaries do, and one of them is like giving another guy like a tattoo on his back, and the whole time they're joking about how like, oh, oh, it looks like a dick. <laughs> like and that's that ten year old joke, they make that joke a running gag for like the entire scene. For like five minutes, the whole scene is them joking about that. And it doesn't end, and it's never funny. And that's like even when Arnold comes in and he's like, he's like, hey, who put the dick on? Yeah, exactly. Like, 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 it's like this is not funny. Stop it. And and it didn't work the first time. And then there's a part too where like there are these oh two goofy black guys in a car, and he goes like, he goes like. Oh man, hey, I was like, I, I gotta go piss. And he goes like, well, let me go piss in the car, man. I'm gonna go piss in the car, man. Oh, go to piss in the car, man. Like, and then he pulls out the. the he pulls thing. out a Gatorade bottle full of urine. And then, and then they make a they make a dick side yeah. joke. Oh my they're like, they're gosh. Like, they're like, Hey, I ain't sticking my dick where your dick yeah, is. He's like, like, he's like, oh, I bet your dick would stick and fit in there. Yeah. He's like, oh, no, I need a thermostat. Hey, thermostat. Like, what? This movie is written by a five year old. <laughs> a five year old. A grown man with a five year old sense of humor. Twelve year old. Twelve year old sense of humor. <laughs> it's not funny. These characters. Well, and, like, and, and look, again, like, you might think, like, Here's the problem. None of these characters are like are likable, but they're supposed to be. And what's happening is throughout the film, someone who would actually think that we would like these characters, like who in their Skip right mind would like those characters? The same guy who wrote Die Hard Five. Oh my God. So, um, <laughs> so, so, as this is happening, members of the task force are getting killed off one by one. And so they think, oh my gosh, the, the drug cartel is, well, the, is, is going after us, well, the and they want the death, money. The first death is awesome. I mean... The trailer park death? <laughs> that was so stupid! I was like, what? That was so stupid! So, um, oh so they're getting killed off one by one, and then they start to realize <laughs> this is beyond the drug cartel. Whoever it was that took the money is doing this. And then they realize it's somebody from the task force. So, um, real quick, let me go over the members of the task force. You got Bland McBland Bland number one, who dies in the trailer park. The trailer. There's like three Bland guys well, who no, we don't no. know anything about. Remember, there was a guy that died in the initial raid of the... Uh, exactly. The money. There's like three members of the... group, And him. then there's the guy that gets nailed. And then there's the guy that gets killed in the cabin. So there's four guys in the task force who we don't... Have, we know we know nothing about them. There's no personality to them. We know nothing about them. So there's four guys there. There's them. Now here are the main characters of the task force. There's Arnold, who is the one likable character out of the entire group, and that's mostly because it's Arnold. But besides that, if it wasn't Arnold, if it wasn't it, Arnold, it, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't. Have but he's not a. He's not an irredeemable jerk though. Like he's kind of harsh. But like he has, he but has he has an understandable a, backstory. He has a he has a tragic backstory, and I'd like to point out. We'll get to that later. The backstory is way more interesting than the current plot going on. But he, so yeah, he's kind of a tragic hero, or anti-hero. And then you got Sam Worthington, who's kind of likable to some extent. Which but one is he? The husband, Sam, okay, Mason. Okay. From, Mason from Black Ops. I keep forgetting. Um, and he's okay, but even he can be a bit annoying at times. His oh, wife. Probably because it's putting. He has to put up with his wife. His wife, who God. spoiler alert is the villain, which I saw that coming, way ahead. I don't know about you. I saw her. I, 
her being a villain, I saw coming so far. I wanted her to. I wanted her when to they, die when so they started cool. dying off, I wanted her to be the next one to die. I know. I was she so was so annoying. Fast. This character, from beginning to... I could talk forever about this character. She is awful. Just awful. And they try so hard... <sighs> Gosh. This is... I'm going to go on a siren. I hate it when action movies... I'm all about action movies trying to give female a actresses leads. I'm all for that. And it's getting better, I think, in Hollywood. Like, Haywire came out. The the woman, I can't remember her name, but the Asian actress from The Expendables 2, she was really good. In The Expendables 3, there's going to be there's this, gonna be this UFC, the, UFC. She was a UFC champion. Yeah, yeah. Champ, yeah. I'm all for that. I am totally all for that. That's great. I still don't like... And Michelle Rodriguez in the Fast and Furious movies is good. But I can't stand it. When they try to make them like super hot and sexy at the same time, she wasn't. She wasn't really, but I feel like they were trying to though. Uh, at least in the beginning they were. Yeah. In the beginning they were. Later on, she kind of got dirty and gross. <laughs> but like at first they kind of did, and it was annoying. Like it was just distracting. And more importantly, I do not buy that this woman is this tough dangerous mercenary. I don't buy it for a second. That's not me being sexist. Like I said, I'm totally for women having more action well, leads. The, the first, I don't believe that this person first, would be a tough, the first dangerous mercenary. Scene you see her and she's she's a hundred percent ready to have sex with this yes. dude who's her enemy. Yes, and while sniffing coke and going <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll talk about her later because I will give her credit. I'll, I'll give the actress credit. She kind of goes insane towards the end, and it's kind of funny. She was insane the entire movie. But she gets really insane towards the end, and it was kind of funny. So you got the obnoxious wife who is just constantly spewing out obnoxious dialogue. Like, in the beginning, they're, like, shooting up people, and she's like, Oh, <laughs> I think I broke a nail. <laughs> And then you got the biker member of the gang who is a stereotypic steroid tattoo biker. A total jerk from beginning to end. And then you got Terrence Howard. Now, Terrence Howard's character is a jerk, too. I'll give him this. I kind of enjoyed watching him, but it was mostly just because it was Terrence Howard. Being Terrence Howard. Other than that, it doesn't work. You know, I... Like, to be honest, though, like, he wasn't, like, there wasn't a lot of scenes with his character. No, he's kind of hidden in the background, and I think that was done, too, because, here's the spoiler, the wife and Terrence Howard, the wife is married to S Sam Worthington's character. At Ooh, the end, Mary. at the end, she reveals that she's having an affair with Terrence Howard, and then those two run off, and they're, like, the new bad guys. I think that was done... I think the reason why Terrence Howard's not in much of the movie is because they don't want you to think about him much so that when it's revealed that he's the villain, it's like, oh, that's right. He's kind of been in the background the whole time. I, I think that was the idea. I, I didn't um, think that at all. But I want to bring that up, though. When she reveals to Sam Worthington, I, that was so, so horribly done. And but that, But that brings me to a big point I want to bring about this movie. From beginning to end, the dialogue... The timing and the pacing has no subtlety at all. People are talking to each other at a rapid rate. And they just, they enter a scene, they say their lines, and then they just get out. There is not a moment of subtlety. Like, the, the, F, the FBI chick and the black guy are walking out of that building and they're talking. And then the DA guy's like, hey, hey, who are you, who are you? Hey, you shouldn't be on this case, get off the case. And then just like walks away and they're like... What was that? I don't know. Okay. And they just keep going. It was like, that's every scene in this movie. Nobody talks like a human being. Everyone just says their lines and then moves off. Like, the really funny dialogue. They're all just saying the lines. Like, they're not, like, there's no context to it. They're just, like, saying the lines really quick. And that makes me wonder, maybe the cast of this movie, who tried their best... I think the cast of this movie, most of them were aware. We shouldn't we shouldn't be blaming the actors here. No, they did the best they could. Yeah. I think the cast was aware that this movie sucked, so they were just trying to get done with it as quickly as possible. 
Because they're just, everyone is just saying their lines so quickly. And when she reveals to Sam Worthington that she's having an affair, she just says it. She's like, Sam, I'm having sex with him. No, and, and then she, she just well, leaves. The, like, like, it's, like, it's like, okay. So it was totally the, irrelevant, the, the biker, too. The biker guy drives off or whatever. Well, let's start from the beginning of this scene so they know. So, like, right, okay. this is towards the end of the movie. So they get, like, various members of the task force have been killed off. So they call for a meeting. So the whole task force gets together. It's Arnold, the biker, Terrence Howard, Sam Worthington, and the wife. And so they're like, what's going on? They're like, don't you get it? It's one of us. Somebody in this group is killing each other off for the money. And so then the biker, so they're talking about it like, it could be you, it could be you. And then the biker is like, like pointing guns at exactly, they're all pointing guns. So the biker, the one who's been the worst out of all of them, is just like, you know what? Screw this. I'm leaving. So he just gets on his bike and leaves. And then there's just a moment of silence. No, no. And then the wife is just like, no, 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 no. Because then, then they, I don't remember something about, like, I forgot it now because I was so confused. But like, the wife says something to Sam Worthington's yes. character. And then they get really excited. And then they like hug and like embrace. And then she kind of backs up and she's really happy. And then straight face. Oh, like, yeah. She's just like, she's just like. I'm sleeping with yes. him. Yes, yeah, what happens is just like, what happens is she says to Arnold, she's like, this was weird too. Um, she was like, she says to Arnold, she's like, don't you know? It's one of us. One of us is going. And then Sam Worthington's like, yeah, my wife is right. Yeah. And he like gets excited for some reason. He runs up and yeah, he's like, mm, yeah, listen to her. And they get really excited and she's like and excited then, too. And then she goes like, just so you know, I'm having sex with him. And then she just like leaves and he's like, what? What? <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so, so horribly done. Mm. Holy crap. This whole movie is insane. But see, it that, that's is so, so insane. But see, like that, that, like when she reveals that, it was like so, like, it was surprising only because of the fact that I don't understand why that, like, matters. There was... There was it not was, a shred of it subtlety. Came, it came so out of like nowhere. I was just like, yeah. What? But I, that brings me up to something. Sam Worthington, who I like, he was just kind of weird in this movie. Like maybe it was just because his character was poorly written, which I'm sure that's what it was. But like he has some weird moments in this movie. Like okay, so yeah, he like when he like he's like yeah, what was the traitor? And he like kisses her. But even before that, there's a part where he and the wife are talking to the FBI agent, and they're basically, like, scaring her because the FBI agent is, like, investigating who's killing all these members of the task force, and they're like, it's obviously the drug cartel. And so he's, like, basically scaring her into, like, realizing how dangerous the drug cartel is. I didn't even he, get the point of why they, like, she's trying to help them. Why were they, like, trying to... Because they're jerks. Okay. And so he, like, goes, he gets in her face, and I love how he says, he said something like, he, he uses the word penetrate. That's why it's stuck in my head, because that's a creepy word in general. But he said, like, he's like, he's like, see, with, with the DEA task force, we take the drug cartels, and we penetrate the drug. I was like, or no, I was no, like no, what? No, he said something like, something like we penetrate into countries and we yeah, it was, it was so weird. I was like, who talks like that? And so, oh and my god, his, 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 <laughs> his death reveal scene. His okay, we'll talk. We'll get to the death. Okay. We'll get to that later. <laughs> I I wrote that down. I wrote down. I wrote down. I wrote down fridge because like okay, okay I just gotta say like before they know like. It would be seat like it wouldn't a fridge would not hold that. It How could she seat. fit him in there? <laughs> this big steroid induced guy. Yeah, right. So I want to point something out to the characters that I wrote down because you might be thinking, well, you might be thinking, okay, well, this is a DA task force for hire essentially. They're kind of mercenaries at the same time. Yeah. Really crappy that mercenaries. To do what they yeah, do. I mean, and they're really dangerous. They're really ruthless. So you might be thinking. Okay, so you're complaining that they're mean and harsh. Okay, there is a difference between having harsh characters and annoying characters. There's a huge, huge, huge difference, okay? You can have a movie about a really gritty action film about ruthless killers. And it can still be interesting to watch because the characters, might, while they might be ruthless and harsh or even mean for that matter, they can still be interesting. 
And more importantly, we might still be invested into what's going on so that when they are in danger, we actually care. In this movie's case, these characters are just obnoxious. They're, they're just, the whole movie, they're just bantering to each other and making dick jokes and making just, just oh my they're God. just when, annoying. When they were, when they, after the, the first dude died, after his like funeral or whatever, they're like all over at Arnold's house having a party. Exactly. And the agent came over and th they were like. That was when it lost me. Oh. That scene, I was oh, like, you know what, these I, guys suck. I, I hated them after that. Yes. I was like, these guys are that the worst scene, people ever. I after felt that, so bad for her. After that scene, I was like, I wanted I was her like, to like, I'm shoot done with them. These. I wanted her yeah. to like, shoot them. I was done after that. I was like, I'm done with these characters. I'm not giving them another chance. Like, the, this... The, 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 the strip club one almost... I lost. forgot. About, I totally forgot about that. I wrote that down. Okay, so... <laughs> forgot about that. So, after... Um, in the beginning of the movie... The the team gets back together because after some investigation, the DEA realizes that Arnold and the group no, no are innocent, or they, they no, just no, stop no, investigating. It was it was like a, they just got tired. Yeah, of they like, got tired of they of couldn't they couldn't prove any of them wrong, yeah. like guilty, so they just kind of dropped yeah. it. So they dropped the case. So they're like, okay, well now it you're wasn't that they were proven innocent? Yes, they, yes, you're right, you're right. Right. So they're like, okay, well, you're you're okay, so you can go back to doing your task force. <laughs> which is like, what? So, which I want to, but well, before, well, you know, before we get don't know if you're innocent, but here's your gun back. And here's your gun. gun. Here's your badge. Here's your... <sighs> yeah, right. But, like, before we get to the strip club, we'll go to what happens before that. So Arnold gets the team back together, and they're like, okay. That's, what I'm saying. That's almost as bad as the villain giving, giving, uh, uh, what's his name? The gun back in nonstop. Yeah, is there a yeah. Gun on this plane? yeah, that was okay. Pretty I know stupid. I'm the villain, but I'm gonna give you the gun give back. You good. Um, <laughs> so, so Arnold's like, okay, we gotta retrain now. So we get a very short training montage, and it was this again just goes to show how weird, how oddly fast the dialogue is. Because what happens is they go into a practice house and they and they do a trial run. Of shooting bad guys and not shooting which, hostages. Which, by the way, they wouldn't be using live ammunition. I know that. They would be using... Yeah, they'd be using blanks. Which is so stupid, because they were using live ammunition. Yeah. Conditions. I was like, this is a good way to accidentally kill someone. Yeah, exactly. But, like... Yeah, exactly. So, they do that. The first round, they don't do so well. So, they're all, like, getting... They're all, like, bickering and yeah, shit. They're all just, like, getting they're, mad. They're, like, doing a serious exercise, and they're, like... They're, like, oh, I want to go first. No, exactly. I want to go first. And, like, so, and I think it's supposed to be funny, but, again, it's not oh, funny. That was supposed to be funny? I think it was supposed I, to be funny. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this movie's ran by a 12-year-old. So, <laughs> so, the first try around, it doesn't go over so well. And so, they're all, like, really angry. And they're, like, oh, we give up. So Arnold talks to Sam Worthington, and this is another weird moment with Sam Worthington. Sam Worthington is like, he he has apparently this resentment towards Arnold for like five seconds. I'm not kidding. It lasts for five seconds. Arnold's like, what was that all about? You guys are, are better than that. And Sam's like, oh yeah? Well, when we got fired from the DA team, where were you? You weren't with us. This isn't a family anymore. We're broken. And so then he just walks away. I kid you not. It immediately cuts to them doing the trial the trial over again, the practice round over again, and they do better this time, and then they're all like, yeah, we're back together. And well, then the but next but remember, scene... But remember, uh, it's because, like, like, and Arnold's like, and Arnold's like, Yes, and I'm gonna go in there, and you got to shoot the enemies, but you can't shoot me. And he yeah, like goes he in like there sits like, in the middle. I was just like smoking a big sword. Yes. So now they're all a family again, apparently, after doing one successful practice run, and then it immediately cuts to well, Arnold well, Schwartz. Because we can't slow down this roller coaster in the movies. So. I know, right? <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> for a movie that goes so quick, that that moves at such an abnormally fast pace. How is it so long and well, boring? They had, they had to cram all that shit. Uh, yeah, I know. They had to cram <laughs> so much in there. God. I feel like... I, mean, I have, don't want to keep spoiling... The we have all the characters on this team. We have we have Arnold. We have the bad guys. We yeah, have yeah, his yeah. backstory. We have the I feel the, the agents. We have... Oh, my I God. I feel like... I, again, I don't want to keep, like... Okay, I keep giving Skip Woods a lot of crap. I don't want to keep giving him crap because he is just one guy. But, like... 
I feel like he or whoever it was that that was in charge of the structure of this script. I feel like they took three scripts, all of which were incompetent, and tried to cram it into one script. I feel like it's like three movies in one. So immediately after that bizarre scene of them practicing, Arnold, 50 or 60 year old whatever Arnold Schwarzenegger is in a strip club. And with, it's with weird. Ever, with all the, with all the gang. And it's weird. Oh, God. Arnold just like, like, yeah, let's get another round. Bring the babe over here. I got some more singles. It was just, it was weird. I was like, ew. <laughs> like, ew. <laughs> this is kind of gross. Um, I feel like that, that was him as the governor more and, and, than it was and, him as the action I mean, hero. I mean, you know, the obvious, like, you know. They have to do it in a strip club because we have to see the naked women and we have to see the... There was, there was some really unnecessary nudity in this film. Not a ton, but there was some and it was annoying. <laughs> so... Like the, like the, the scene like right before you, you left, the scene when Arnold like creepily goes over to the FBI investigators. While house. she's swimming naked. Yes, and she's swimming and she just happens to be naked. That was weird. And it's like, what? This whole movie is and just she, she's weird. Like, she's like doing backstrokes, and she like goes up to the thing, and he's like standing there. Oh, and I want to point some <laughs> other least, things at least out. For me, at least she acknowledged that it was me. She's like, wow, this isn't creepy at yeah, all. Yeah, I mean, that character was by far the most normal person in the whole I, film. I like She her. wasn't great, but like, she was a human being. With yes, morality. And I felt bad for her because all the people were such dicks to her. Even Arnold uses her in the end. Like, yeah, yeah, like, she really is, like, the only kind of somewhat moral character. That, um, and, of course, she gets crapped on. Yeah, she does. Like, she doesn't die, at least. <laughs> but, like, but anyways, so... Yeah, I mean, okay, what else did I want to point out? Um, okay, I want to point out, speaking of her... Okay, so there's a really, there's some really, again, weird moments. And there's one part where Arnold is with this FBI girl who suddenly becomes the love interest. But um, there's a scene where those two are investigating a house. And at one point, Arnold has to, um, he has to uh, break a booby trap. Um, he has to, like, clip these wires so it doesn't go off. And no, they so... Just step over it. What was it that? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I, same scene, different scenario. I'm sorry. They're at this house. They find a dead body. And so he wants to look at... The dead body has, like, leaves all over him because it happened, like, a week ago. And so he's trying to, like, see if there's a tattoo on him to prove that it's the drug cartel. So Arnold has this big machine gun. And he's like, here, hold this. She holds it. And he, like, da-da-da. And then he goes back. He's like, give me back my gun. I don't trust you. <laughs> Why did you let her hold a gun if you don't trust her? I think it was supposed to be. I think it was supposed to be funny. It was just. I don't know. That was just. Um, so let's get to the backstory. No, the freaking the freaking freakin um, freakin part when they investigate that that one dude's house and she slips into the blood. I actually thought that was good. This movie's pretty gory. Like, I and I kind of liked that it. That was gross. It was gross. I, I mean, if you're if you're like me and you love a See, good that, gore again, fest, again. She just gets crapped on this whole she movie. Does. I felt so bad. If you're for like, her. I mean, this is by no means a horror film, but if you're like me and you enjoy kind of a over the top gore fest, this movie does have quite a bit of that. I will, I'll give it that. I, I did like how over the top the gore was. But let's get to the backstory. By far the best thing going for it plot wise. So Arnold has this dark backstory where, like, a couple of years before the events of the movie, um, and again, this backstory is way more interesting, a way better setup to a movie than this. Um, a few years, be a couple of years before the present time of the movie, they, Arnold and his team kidnap this like big time drug cartel guy, Mexican drug cartel guy. Mm. And they're like, great, we got him. Now we're going to hand him over to the Mexican police. And right when they do this chick in the force who for, I guess just, I guess this guy's, like, really notorious. She wants this guy dead, so illegally pulls out her gun, kills the guy, and she gets in trouble. So they're all like, oh, crap. And they're like, well, you know what? This isn't our problem. We're done. Like, we're, we did our job. We're out of this. So they're about to leave, and then almost immediately after that, Arnold gets a call from the drug cartel. They kidnapped his wife and kid. Kids. And 
He had one kid. He had oh, a son. Was that his wife? I thought that was his daughter. Like in the video. That was his wife? That's his wife. Oh, I thought it was his daughter. That's his wife. He has okay, a son. never mind then, sorry. So he kidnaps his wife and kid, and they, they, they kill him. They kill him. And they send him, like... Well, they tortured them. They torture him, and they kill him. And they cut off, like, pieces of them and mailed him. It's actually really brutal. And this is where I think the dramatic side of Arnold worked for the film, because it does... It's the only time in the movie where it's really dark, and I think it works well. It's Because br- it doesn't... And you know why it works well? Because it doesn't have the other members of the task force involved. Just that scene of Arnold watching the video of his wife getting killed and tortured... That was way more effective than any other dramatic scene in the whole film. And so then Arnold like goes on this rampage to find the people that killed him, and he fails. So then that gets put on hold for later. Again, way better backstory than the current plot going on in the movie. So more people get killed off, and then it's and then it's like the wife and Terrence Howard run off together and they start killing off the rest of the members. So, okay, so then, as this happens, we'll, now we'll bring up Sam Worthington's death. So the wife <laughs> is, like, walking out of the house, and Sam Worthington is extremely angry, and he's like, you're just going to run off with him, yeah? Well, so she, he has her passport. He take, yeah, he has her passport, puts it and down. She, the, she's, like, asking him. Yeah, she's like, give me, give me the passport. And he puts it in the garbage disposal. And so she gets angry, and out of a fit of rage, takes a kitchen knife. Huge and cu- kitchen knife. Huge kitchen knife. And cuts his jugular, which apparently... I thought she stabbed him. No, because he was, like, bleeding out from the neck. Oh, okay. And so she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry, Bleed baby, I'm sorry. everywhere. Blood everywhere. So then... This was so stupid. So then, like, five minutes, 20 minutes later, maybe oh, an hour no, later. Oh, no, it was much It hadn't been much maybe, later. Maybe because, a because like, Because, like, the whole kitchen was, like, completely clean. I guess... So later on... So she on, had to, like, Arnold hard at cleaning that up. Yeah. So Arnold realizes that the, that the wife is behind everything. Or at least somewhat behind Involved. everything. So they go to their house, and they look around, and they're like... And, and they're and like, there's... Just to keep in mind, they go in this, this kitchen, and it's completely clean. The kitchen that we just saw Sam Worthington die in is completely clean. And they're like, where is everyone? And then there's a blood stain on... The bottom of the fridge. On the bottom of the fridge. And they open the fridge, and Sam Worthington is crammed, his dead body is crammed in the fridge with blood just gushing out. Oh, they out. open it up, and it like... Just a pool, like... I mean, it's it, it, it's no elevator from The Shining. You'll get that when you see The Shining. Okay. But it, it's it's something. And then it just made me think, like, why would she go to such trouble to do that? They know, they already know clearly that she is the mole. Why would she go to the trouble of covering up his dead body? Especially since they were able to find us. It was just such a pointless scene. So then they're like, oh crap, we gotta find them. So they get into an action scene, a car chase, with Terrence Howard driving, the the psycho chick in the truck shooting. There was also completely no point to the... Like... The kidnapping. They kidnapped that one random person. It was just a diversion. And then they yeah. put her in the car, but mm-hmm. then, like, he walks towards the car anyways. And they shoot him. So so why, like, but even if they didn't have the, the hostage in the car, he would have walked just, towards it anyway. I don't know, man. So they get into a car chase. So Terrence Howard's driving. Psycho girls in the trunk shooting. Uh, FBI girls chasing with somehow, Arnold. Somehow not falling out and dying. Yeah. Yeah, gosh, well, well, yeah. So, and Arnold's shooting in the in the FBI girl's uh, car. So, yeah, okay. this girl Don't is even in the get tr- me started on the the aim. Yeah, this girl okay. is in the back, is in a trunk, open trunk, bright pink jacket, just, and no one can hit her. And it's not like she's like ducking her or anything. She's just, and the whole time Terrence is not like swerving around. He's just driving straight. So there's no excuse I, for Arnold not to be able no, to hit her. Even before that, like when when they were sitting stationary, and the 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 FBI chick yes. pulls out that shotgun and he shoots. You know how easy it would be ping, to ping to ping. Uh, it, she, it would hit her. Terrible. Like that. Just, so they get into a car chase, and it basically quite a few innocent people no, die. Remember and, the like just. 
when they have the scene where the guy out in the woods by himself, when he's attacked by the the four yeah. Guatemalan... They're so bad aim in that, too. Yeah, though. I know, and he was, like, running back into the house, and they're all shooting at him, and it's like... I mean, they finally get him a couple times, but... Well, they the, do, yeah. but... Yeah, the aiming, the... the it's okay. like, it's, okay. like it's, it's a cliche in action films for, for people, especially villains that have bad aim, sure. This was pretty bad. This was uh, bad. Even for, an, even for an Arnold film. And my favorite action film of all time is Commando. And that has like <laughs> thousands of bullets dodging him for no reason. But anyways, so the car chase goes on for a while. Again, it's a pretty good car chase. And it ends basically the same way the car chase in the 7-Ups ends. It ends with... The bad it ends with the car getting basically just roofed, just poosh, just whole roof gets taken up. Only it's way more brutal than it was in the Seven Ups. But the Seven Ups was a much better movie. I digress. So Terrence Howard's okay. dead. It's a really it's a really good cop film. Okay. Um, Terrence Howard's dead, and Psycho Girl. Yeah. We'll get back to her in a moment. The Psycho Girl is just a mess, just blood everywhere. And, and so, and so um, Arnold and the FBI chick are talking to her, and they're like, why did you do it? Why did you kill, why did you kill the members of our team? Our whole team's dead now. And she's like, because I didn't have the money. They took the money, and I had to get them. And then Arnold, and here's a big twist, Arnold says, no, I took the money. I took the money. I took the, no, I took the money. And the FBI chick was like, what? And so... The reason why he took the money, so it's all it revealed. Are you going to talk about the like how he like disappeared? Yes, we'll get okay. to that in a moment. So it, it's revealed. Here's a twist for us too. It's revealed that this whole time Arnold was the one that stole that, in fact, stole the ten million dollars, and his reason for it was that he was going to go to Mexico and bribe the police with the ten million so that he can find the guy who ki- and the people who killed his wife and kid. So it, it was all a big plot for revenge. Fair enough. And so Psycho Girl, we'll just get to, we'll just talk about Psycho Girl never forget. I, I'm going to digress for a moment. I know that's new, right? I never digress, right? But, um, but um, Psycho Girl, during the car chase, Psycho Girl gets even more psycho. This actress starts Nicolas caging her role. She is like shooting and she's like, ah! We're gonna get you! Wow! And it's kind of hilarious. And then she she kills that random chick in the car. Yeah. And she's, like, so, <laughs> she's like she's like she's like, oh, we just got that bitch or something like yes, that. And it's like, yes. it's like what? There as they're as the car chase, like, there's a random pedestrian driving, and she shoots a girl in that car to block to block the cars apart, and that's what she says. It was insane. So I just want to talk about that. So. Arnold tells her, like, I'm the one that took the money to get to get revenge. And so she's like, ah, I can't believe you betrayed me. And so then he kills her. Just, well, he, she's like, she's, well, like, she's she trying to, like, pull yeah. her gun. And, and he just, sh- cold blank, just shoots her. So the FBI chick is just, like, losing it. She's like, what is going on? And then the rest of the FBI gets there. She turns around and is like, we need to arrest him. Turns around and he's gone. Like Batman, I, he is just I, like, 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 where'd he go? He's gone. He's not on the truck. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Like, <laughs> that was so silly. So by this point, you're thinking like, you're thinking to yourself, wow, this movie should have ended 30 minutes ago. Oh my God, it's not going. Over. It's not over <gasps> yet. I thought for a moment, I was like, okay, is the movie over now? Nope. Cut to Mexico. Arnold wearing a cowboy hat, which was awesome. <laughs> we see him bribing the police without any talking. They, they give him, like, the papers of the guy that's behind it all. He goes to a Mexican bar, and they kind of zoom in on him as he grabs a gun. I'm like, are they going to end it now? Nope. He kills the guy, gets into a huge standoff between the rest of the gang and the bar. And, it's a- again, it's actually a pretty good shootout scene well i mean arnold gets if shot you, up. If, you, if you don't take into account the fact that like when he walks out of the bathroom and like 10 people start shooting at him and he gets although he walks. although he threw a flashbang though before going out yeah but it only got the, the guy right outside the door oh i thought he got everyone no oh well anyways so arnold he does succeed in killing everyone in the bar that that was shooting him that but has guns that has guns but he gets shot up too 
And it literally just ends with him sitting down, drinking some whiskey, lighting up his thousandth cigar. I thought, I th- I thought like, it, when he was sitting there, I thought he was going to, like, die or something. I'm surprised he didn't. But it just, he it just cuts to black with him. Actually, I was thinking about that movie, End of Days. That's the only movie where Arnold has died as a human. Because he's played the Terminator multiple times and dies as the Terminator. But End of Days is the only movie where, as a human being, he has died and, in a movie. And I actually thought, I was like, is he actually going to die in this movie? He never dies in those movies when he's not a Terminator. But, um, no, but yeah, it just ends. It just ends. But I think we're supposed to believe that he dies. He might die. It, it's like the ending of Drive. He might die. He may. He might live it through. We don't know. So, oh my gosh. So, you might be wondering, okay, we were laughing at a lot of this, talking about it. It's I would really... have been laughing. I would have been laughing much harder if that if there wouldn't have been that other guy in there. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want to bother him. Oh, oh, oh! The theater. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the theater. I don't. Yeah, whatever. Um, it's fair game. It's just us three. <laughs> but um, this is not so bad. It's good. It's just not good. There. I mean, there's some campiness to it, but it's not like. It's not like, you know, Commando or something like that, where it's just so ridiculous that it's fun. It's just, it's just bad. And Some it's, of the parts frustrated me. It's, it is frustrating, because this movie is frustrating. It's written I, it, so it incompetently. Just, just, the characters made me so mad. The editing is weird. The, again, the pacing is so odd. And the characters are terrible. The dialogue sucks. It's not funny when it's trying to be funny. It's mostly not dramatic when it's trying to be dramatic. The only time it works is the backstory with Arnold. It's, 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 it's not funny when it's trying to be funny, and it's funny when it's not trying to be funny. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Honestly, this whole movie might have had a shot if it was written by someone more competent. And if you just took out the whole task force, if the movie was just about Arnold trying to find the Mexican cartel members that killed his family, that would have been a much better movie, most likely. So you get some decent action scenes, not nearly enough. You get a, a solid performance by Arnold, not up to save the film. I stand by what I said at the beginning of the discussion. If you are a diehard Arnold fan like me, it's worth seeing just to see Arnold's performance and the pretty good action scenes. But do not spend any money on this. Do not see it in the theaters, especially. Um, red box it. Wait for it to come on Netflix. Well, you can't spend money on it. A dollar. You can. You can buy. It. It's worth a dollar. I'll. I'll give it the movie that. It's not that bad. It's worth a dollar rental. Okay. Um, but it's not nearly as good as Escape Plan. It's not as good as The Last Stand. It's not nearly as good ex- as Expendables Two. Um, it's yeah. It's. I'm trying to think. Of, I'm gonna look over my notes real quick. If there's anything else I want to bring up, you have any other? Thoughts you want to bring up? No. <laughs> okay. Um, I wrote three pages because I just could not believe how dumb this movie was. Even for Did you see film. the biker guy's death coming? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I saw that coming. Because he was starting to be a nice guy. That's why. He was a jerk from but the like beginning. But like dying of... right there? Yes. That, that yes, kind of, I, that I, I did. Kind of because there was no music playing. That's how, if you want to know when a jump scare is going to happen, it's going to happen when there's no music. Yeah. And when there's just a normal conversation. I mean, that's when it's best, because it throws you off. So I, I saw it coming. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about the gym floor real quick. There's a scene in the beginning when Arnold... This is just a minor, minor thing I want to bring up. It totally that right. bothered you, didn't it? It, it was just funny. Um, Arnold goes to the gym to work out, and the gym looks like a 50s diner. <laughs> I just want to say that. I just want to say it. It's, I thought it was kind of funny. Okay, I so... I would be surprised if it's, like, if it's like his personal gym. Because he probably well, has one of those. I'm sure he does. Um, so, Sabotage, D+. I mean, it's it's pretty bad. It's it's not the worst Arnold film, but it's pretty bad. Uh, I was I was disappointed. And I, I love Arnold. There, it, there are a lot of bad Arnold films that I, that I still like. Eraser is not a good movie. But I really like Eraser. Jingle All the Way is not a good movie, but I really like Jingle All the Way. I mean, it's it's pretty. I like The Running Man a lot. I mean, it's got to be pretty bad for me to not like an Arnold film. 
So that's my final thought on Sabotage. Let's just talk about trailers really quick. Um, most of these trailers, in fact, all of these trailers I had not seen before. Um, we yeah. got Guardians of the Galaxy. I had not seen the trailer yet. That looked stupid to me. Well, fun, though. Like, fun. I, I guess. Um, I, I'm looking forward to Guardians of the okay. Galaxy. I think it'll be fun. I mean, it's okay if you, if you don't like it. I, I think it'll be fun. I think it's got a lot of potential to be a really fun movie. I mean, it had that guy from Step Brothers, whatever his name yeah. is. And, and I don't know. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I didn't mind. He seemed like he was doing a fine job. <laughs> um, he's actually done some serious stuff before. Um, but um, Guardians of the Galaxy looked fun. And then there was, okay, the mo oh, gosh, I don't know. The director of Sinister is doing a new horror film called Deliver Us from Evil, I guess. It Maybe it'll be good. Um, it looked like a really generic haunted house movie. Um, that's more in my department than yours. Um, there was a really predictable jump scare in it in the trailer. But it's still coming. Um, um, you know it's coming. I knew it was coming. Yeah. I still don't know. I'm not. I don't know. I need to see a a more in depth trailer before I make up my mind about that because about that movie because I didn't see Sinister. <laughs> Like the the owl thing falls off. And it's that was kind of funny. Like, hoo, 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 hoo. I thought that was kind of funny actually. <laughs> <It's> like, <what? laughs> I thought that was funny. But like, when it comes to like haunted house movies, I have to like, dude. I dude, have to. Haunted house we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> when it comes to like haunted house movies, I have to see more of the trailer before I come to my prediction because when the when I saw the trailer for The Conjuring, I thought it looked really crappy and generic. But then when I went to go see it. It was my favorite horror film of the year, and it was my number two best film of 2013. So maybe this will actually be good. I It was a really short trailer, so we'll see more about that. I don't know about Deliver Us from Evil. So there was that. And then there was a war film called Railway Man, and that looked interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Like It looks like kind of like a revenge film, but well, it's, like a dialogue-based. It's, like it's like a thing... Well, this is what I, it's like, these, these dudes were British soldiers, and they were captured by Japanese, by the Japanese in the Pacific during mm -hmm. World War II, and they were sent to work on mm -hmm. something, but they refused to, and so this they Japanese tortured commander, like, tortured them, and then after the war, he's like, he's like screwed up, like one of the dudes yeah. is screwed up mentally, and he goes searching, like he discovers that this commander of the Japanese that was torturing them is still alive. Yeah. And he like goes searching for him. Yeah. yeah. So, that looked like it has potential. Now I'll tell you what has potential. The sequel to The Purge. This movie is finally, this movie is what I wanted the first one to be. I pointed this out in a lot of reviews. I wanted The Purge to be like a multi-story um, piece where we see where we follow different people that are out in the city during the purge and the various things going on. Instead, what we got in the first purge was an obnoxious family in their home with people trying to break into the house. It was just a generic home thriller. This trailer looked kind of awesome. This was like Escape from New York, kind of. Like, it was cool. Like, almost post that, that, that plot, though, like, the Purge plot is, mm. like, really dark. I mean, yeah. And it has, there's a lot of opportunity. For one day, for 12, 12 hours, hours yeah. every crime is yeah. legal. I like it, though, because wow. it has, Jeez. it has a very satirical idea to it. it. It's, it's like a good satire, like a good political satire. Um, there's a lot of movies that have done that well over years, like Death Race 2000 and um, well, Escape from New York, making New York City a prison. You know, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of potential, and the first one didn't live up to the potential. This one might. This looks kind of cool. There was some cool stuff in the trailer. We'll see. It's still produced by Michael Bay, so I don't want to get my hopes too high up. Well, I mean, but you know, um, Ninja Turtles. I still have not seen the trailer. I'm trying to avoid it. <laughs> um, so we'll see. I'm kind of looking forward to The Purge, too. That looks kind of cool. Um, oh, gosh. The last... We got a really diverse list of trailers. That was kind of nice. Um, Haunted House 2. Now, if there is a Haunted House movie that I can predict by the trailer, it's Haunted House 2. Was there Was there actually a number one? Was there yes, a first yes. One? Oh, jeez. It was terrible. <laughs> it, it was a spoof of Paranormal Activity. 
right? This is basically a spoof of Paranormal Activity. It's the like Conjuring. A, it was it, very much it's, spoofing. It's like a, it's like a scary. Movie. It's like a scary movie, but it's mm -hmm. way weaker. Yeah. It's by much, much more incompetent writers. It was mostly judging by the trailer. It was mostly making fun of The Conjuring, and not well. None of the jokes were funny. That 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 looks terrible. I can't believe they're making. I didn't even know the the I didn't know that haunted house was that successful. Well, they're making Rio too, and no one no one saw that. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> when <laughs> when I heard from when I heard other people talk about Rio too, everyone's reaction has been like Rio too. Oh yeah, Rio. That's getting a sequel. <laughs> like, that's the reaction to everybody on Rio too. That made like, enough like, money. Like that made enough. Apparently, it did. <laughs> apparently, there was just enough people that went to go see it. I'm done talking about sabotage. Don't see it. Um, again. Sabotage. Definitely wait for it to on video. Sabotage. If you're see it. So, um, thanks a lot for watching. Um, I'll probably see Captain America soon. Um, I want to see The Raid 2 pretty soon. And there's a couple other movies. So, I'll have some more reviews up soon. So, thanks for watching.